Hey folks, Zach Ostrom, how are you insider, Indianapolis Star. Uh, this is a quick, I guess, football recruiting update for January 4th, 2024. One quick programming note. I apologize I didn't do uh, an insider video after the Nebraska loss last night. To be completely honest with you, I was not in Lincoln. We split some of the road trips up um, just for sort of budget purposes. I didn't make that trip, so I was home. Um, and it was about one o'clock in the morning and I was right here on the other side of this wall is, 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 are my kids' bedrooms and I just didn't want to wake anybody up that late at night. So, um, they're asleep now, but it would be a little bit less of a big deal if they woke up at 9.45 as opposed to uh, 1 a.m. So, um, sorry about that, but wanted to do this one quick. Uh, Indiana had a busy day in the transfer portal today. Not necessarily by surprise. I think Kurt Signetti had kind of indicated that... There would probably be space for at least three to five more transfers, kind of the other side of this, uh, other side of Christmas, kind of getting to, um, getting into the, the, the area, sort of the portal window right before the spring semester starts when guys who want to transfer mid-season um, are able to, to do so. Um, and Indiana picked up three, uh, three different, or excuse me, four different commitments today. Excuse me. I was trying to pull up the stats for one of them there. Um, the headliner is Elijah, I believe, I believe it's pronounced Surratt. Um, he was a, he saw, he was a two year wide receiver at James Madison last year's a sophomore. He was all Sunbelt first team, um, across his two seasons last year. He, he had 82 catches, which is a remarkably high number in college. Um, for 1,191 yards and eight touchdowns across his two years at JMU. He had 124 catches for 1,891 yards and 21 touchdowns, and he averaged roughly 15 and a half yards per catch. Um, he's a big-bodied player. Uh, I've, I've looked at some film of him kind of going back to when he entered the portal because it certainly felt like Indiana was going to be a, a runner and rider for him. Um, six foot two, 207, just a, a really sort of strong playmaker, um, good in one-on-one -on -one coverage, you know, just kind of the modern – you know, the, the, a little bit of a, um, maybe a little bit of a comparison that just came to mind. It's not a perfect one, and I'll admit I haven't broken down all of his film, um, but uh, looks, you know, a little bit like Cody Latimer, kind of that kind of receiver, um, and I think a, a player that you would expect to compete right away to start, you know, opposite Donovan McCulley, um, but a player that really kind of, I would assume at this point, probably caps a, a dramatically remade wide receiver room when you look at um, the, the three transfers that they brought in um, before Christmas, Miles Price, uh, the other two whose names, forgive me, uh, are escaping Miles Cross is one, um, you know, guys that were just really, really productive. Keyshawn Williams was the other one from Wake Forest. Guys that I think can move around a little bit, some, you know, some guys with maybe more slot type skill sets in some respects. Now you bring in a, a player like, a, again, I believe it's pronounced Surratt, um, you know, that or Sarat, um, Elijah Surratt, who, who can, you know, kind of give you that compliment to Donovan McCulley. I mean, it, you know, on paper anyway, and let's see what these guys look like in spring practice and in fall camp. But on paper, you know, this is as deep as Indiana's wide receiver room has been in a really long time. Um, the other three, I guess the, the one other thing to say about, about Surratt is, um, and I really hope I'm pronouncing his name right, forgive me. Um, the one other thing to say about him is, you know, he's one of roughly a dozen James Madison players now that have followed Kurt Signetti to um, to Bloomington from Harrisonburg. The, the difference here is that he elected to keep his recruitment open. He, he didn't just kind of enter the portal and then, you know, kind of wait a little while and then commit to Indiana. He elected to really kind of go through the process. I think he reported a Wisconsin offer, a Purdue offer, Kansas State, Cal, South Carolina, maybe one or two others. And he was on a visit to Bloomington, you know, I think yesterday into today and obviously announced his commitment tonight. Um, you know, I mean, that's a, it, to get a guy like this with his pedigree, you don't know what every, there will always be questions about sort of the, the transition up from the, the group of five level to the power five level or whatever. But, you know, everything about his profile, if, if, if this were a vacuum and, and Indiana were just signing him from, you know, a school it had no connection to before it started recruiting him, this would feel like a major win for the Hoosiers, um, for him going up that level, coming off of a really successful season. Um, so it feels like a pretty, a pretty important, noteworthy commitment. Three others today, Elijah Green, uh, a wide receiver, or excuse me, not a wide receiver, uh, a running back um, from, 
uh, from North Carolina, who was particularly productive in 2022 when he had 558 yards and eight touchdowns. He only played in five games last year, had four carries for 12 yards. Um, but Indiana takes him. He's one of, I think he's the third or fourth running back Indiana's taken out of the portal in this, in this cycle. And then the other two, um, that are interesting are, um, Basically, Indiana took Old Dominion's starting safeties. Um, Old Dominion, it's worth saying, plays in um, the same conference. If I'm not mistaken, Old Dominion is also in the Sun Belt. I'm going to go ahead and Google that while we're talking here. Um, but um, one way or the other, it's in the same part of the country that – Old Dominion is in the Sun Belt. I'm glad I got that right. Um, the Monarchs went 9-3 and three this season. Uh, Mercer, no, no, excuse me. I'm, I'm getting really crossed up here. I'm looking at basketball schedules now. The Monarchs uh, did play in a bowl game this season. I believe they won, or they lost their bowl game to Western Kentucky in rather dramatic fashion. Um, but that has become a, a pretty competitive um, group of five program in the last few years. And um, Indiana took Sean Asbury and uh, Terry Jones, who were, in effect, the Monarchs' two starting safeties last season. I think Asbury started all 12 games at safety last season, and Jones, I think, started 11 of 12. Between them, they uh, finished with 200 tackles um, last season, and obviously safety is a a really big area of need for Indiana. Um, a number of players lost to safety either in the portal or just because they were out of eligibility, you know, guys like Josh Sanguinetti who played a lot of football at Indiana. And so that was kind of one of those spots that you felt really needed some kind of some shoring up from a, um, uh, both a depth and an impact impact perspective. And Indiana appears to have done that with, with Terry Jones and Sean Asbury. So a busy day in the portal for Indiana, but by all accounts, a good one. Um, just wanted to recap that here. Hadn't really written a ton about, Football recruiting coming out of the new year had really obviously geared back up toward toward basketball and the Big Ten restart. And so it felt kind of meaningful to just go ahead and sort of run this down because Indiana had a very busy day. And, and I suspect there there may be, you know, a small handful um, of names still to trickle in just as, as Indiana maybe tries to solidify its roster before uh, the spring semester starts on Monday. It's worth saying, unless something has changed, and I always say this because I haven't checked with the registrar's office in a long time, but uh, the way it has typically worked for a long time at Indiana is you can register for classes within the first week. So basically starting somewhere in the second week of a semester, you cannot register for a full semester class. And, and so that's kind of always the, the cutoff for bringing in guys mid-year is whether you can get guys kind of to, to register within that first week for classes so they can, because you can't practice, work out with the team, all those kinds of things if you aren't registered for classes, obviously. So that's kind of the deadline you're working under if you're Indiana at this point. We'll leave it there. Thank you so much for watching. Um, we'll be back with our Friday rundown tomorrow. We'll probably talk a little bit more about this, but kind of talk about some other things too, heading into the weekend in a big basketball game against Ohio State. Until then, we'll start for the Indianapolis Storm. Zach Ostrom, we'll talk to you soon.